Good morning, everyone. So for today's video, I decided to uh, go with a different approach. Uh, I decided to do a one take Monday uh, because I'm not going to be doing much today. Uh, I've slept in uh, and I'm just going to be basically just cleaning. I don't think I'm going to leave the house at all, um, which doesn't make for a very exciting blog, but that's why I decided to do a one take Monday today and just kind of explain to you guys uh, something that maybe some of you have been wondering who don't know me personally. Um, because in the beginning, I said that uh, I was in a wheelchair, and I am. I use a wheelchair quite frequently. I use it uh, in my show, and I use it um, basically anywhere I go. But I do have the leg braces. And I just wanted to share with you guys the story of how uh, I started using the leg braces so that you guys have a better understanding of why I use the leg braces so much. Um, so to start, I was born with spina bifida, uh, and the, the, the long term for my spina bifida was called lipomyelomeningocele. And uh, that basically means that I was born with a tumor the size of a man's fist, non-cancerous in my back. And at three days old, I had that tumor taken out. Well, because the tumor was fused with the spine, that was what caused my spina bifida. And uh, it messed up nerves, it messed up my bladder, it messed up my bowel, and it gave me a hydrocephalus, so I have to have a shunt in order to regulate the uh, CSF fluid um, or cerebral spinal fluid in my brain. So when I was younger, uh, I used a wheelchair all the time, and my leg strength was, was very, very weak. Um, and I had always kind of liked the idea of walking, but I just kind of, you know, took it as it was and, you know, the wheelchair was just my thing. But as I got into music more and more and knew that this was something that I wanted to pursue uh, as a career, uh, I got to thinking, you know, how cool would it be to, to be able to perform? Well, then I had a dream uh, one night that I was on stage performing with a guitar. And it was in that moment that I knew that I want to pursue walking to a better degree than what I was because what I was doing before was basically crawling because of the leg strength that I had. I had nearly no leg strength. So I went to my, uh, my orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Monk, and I approached him about it. And I love this guy to death. I, I love all my doctors because they, they grew up with me and, you know, they've always believed in me. And I said... I want to be able to walk, um, and my first goal was to amputate because my legs up to that point had been giving me nothing but uh, infections. With my disability, I cannot feel from the knee down, and because I have no feeling there, if I was to scrape my leg or get a cut as a child and I didn't realize that I had gotten that cut or that scrape, well, then that wound would start to fester and... and uh, it would become infected very, very fast. And when I was younger, I looked at my legs as if they were something that were more of a hindrance to me than they were a help. And so my first solution was just go ahead and take them off because I've seen Olympic athletes that were able to just put on prosthetic legs and they could run marathons. And I thought that could be me, uh, only just on stage performing instead because I'm not an athlete really. But... Uh, I approached him about it, and being an orthopedic surgeon, he said, oh, I'm kind of hesitant to chop off legs that are not necessarily life-hindering or, or life-threatening, I should say. And so he sent me to several professionals around the country uh, in Chicago, Cleveland, Columbus, and, uh, even some people in Toledo. And uh, every single one of the people that I met with to talk about uh, how... I was going to try and pursue better walking said you shouldn't uh, you should accept the fact that you're in a wheelchair you should accept the fact that uh, there are other musicians that are in wheelchair uh, aka Isaac Perlman whom I do admire uh, but you're never gonna be what you want to be uh, what you've just described to me the person on stage performing in it um, and that was really hard for me to accept because up until that point in my life, you know, people are like, you can do anything. Well, now I'm having professionals tell me you can't. And I wasn't willing to accept that. 
And so I went back to my doctor in Toledo and uh, my doctor still hesitant to uh, go with amputation said, well, before we take that step, I want to try some a, a set of surgeries in mind and they're going to be really hard and the success rate of this might be 50-50, but it depends on the work that you're willing to put in. Oh, hey there, Tater. It depends on the work that you're willing to put in to your own mobility that will be the determining factor as to whether or not this could or could not work. So his idea was to, uh, for me to regrow my muscles in my stomach uh, or build up my muscles in my stomach to a point where they were super strong. And then he was going to transfer those muscles from my stomach into my thighs because my thighs had no to little muscle mass. Then he was also going to uh, flip, uh, no, I shouldn't say flip, uh, cut into the bones and reposition the bones in my foot so that they would be in a walking position so that when I'm walking in the brace, my feet is not dragging and or coming sideways when I'm walking so that it would prevent from me being able to get injured. So for, I believe it was six months leading up to the surgery, I did 200 sit-ups and push-ups a day. And I got so toned down there. I need to start doing that again, by the way. Um, but uh, I, I, I got just really, really toned. And uh, the muscles in my stomach were super, super strong. And when it came time for the surgery, he couldn't have been more thrilled or impressed with, with what I had done in that short amount of time of so six months. And so the surgery finally came, and it was about a 12-hour surgery. And when I came out, I was in a body cast spread eagle for 10 weeks, which meant that I had to lay in my living room in a hospital bed for 10 weeks uh, while my legs healed. In that amount of time, I learned how to play the guitar because that was one of the part of the dream uh, that I had set out to accomplish. And so uh, with the help of my friend Steven Simpson, um, he, uh, he brought over his guitar and I had a small guitar at the time and he taught me and I kind of taught myself as well how to play the guitar. And after, uh, there, was, there was a couple more surgeries afterwards, but they were, they were much smaller surgeries because some of them had to do with just small alignments in the foot and some of them had to do with taking out and repositioning of screws in the feet but none of them were as bad or excruciating as that first one because taking muscles out of your stomach is it's hard it's something that is is not uh, easy to do so uh, after two years worth of work uh, my, I believe this was my sophomore year of high school uh, I was finally able to perform on stage and uh, during uh, something called the Triumph Awards in Toledo, which I was nominated for, I played uh, an original song of mine in front of Dr. Monk, the man who made me walk. And so ever since that I gained that ability, uh, I've tried to uh, use as much walking as I can within reasonable boundaries for myself. Because if I get sick, it's just not good for me to walk because it stresses my body out more than it needs to uh, and if I'm sick, it's just better if my immune system is not being stressed out by something that I could use a wheelchair for. But in order to uh, uh, sustain my ability of walking, I've had to exercise. And um, I, I enjoy being able to walk around. I enjoy the fact that when I come home every day from work, I don't have to pull my wheelchair out of my car in order to enter my own apartment because my apartment is not gigantic by any means uh, but it is the opportunity for me to come into my own residence and do what I want without having to have the wheelchair sitting right there in the middle of the floor um, especially when I don't need it I feel like I'm a faster person when I am moving around my own apartment with the braces. So I hope that for some of you that are watching the blogs that don't know me personally, that that kind of clears up 
why you see me use the braces so much as compared to the wheelchair. Uh, it also doesn't help that when you're using a wheelchair, both of your hands have to be taken at the same time. So you'll very rarely, at least until I find a selfie stick that can be placed on the wheelchair where I can roll and talk to you guys at the same time. But, you know, it, it's kind of, you have to use both your hands to use a wheelchair. So it's harder for me to be able to take uh, blogs uh, rolling in the wheelchair. Every once in a while I'm able to sway it, especially if I'm coming out of the park, because when I'm coming out of the park, it's a downward slope to my car, as compared to coming into the park where you're going kind of uphill. And if I'm going uphill, I've really got to have both of my hands and arms in order to get to my work site. So uh, I hope that uh, this video kind of cleared some some things up for those that don't know me. And I hope that people uh, are able to kind of look at the, the story that I just told you and uh, gain from it that you shouldn't let anybody or anything tell you that you can't do anything because if there is a great example of that, that's the fact that I had so many professional doctors and, and I mean these these doctors worked at great hospitals. They're, they are uh, very, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Respected, very respected surgeons in their field. And all of them believed that I wasn't gonna be able to do what I did but it only took one person uh, to believe in me, and that was my own orthopedic surgeon. And uh, I couldn't be more proud to know this man uh, today. Uh, he's going to be retiring in December, and I'm actually really lucky that our show ends on the 23rd because I'm going to get to go see him before he retires. And uh, I have nothing but the utmost respect for him and what he has been able to give me uh, in my life because I believe that the quality of my life and I, I think also the the fact that he wanted to save my feet because I, I haven't had any real bad infections or cuts since. Uh, now, growing up, I've been way more vigilant uh, looking at my legs every day and making sure. I mean, you've seen in one of my blogs that I do have to, you know, every once in a while I find a cut, but uh, I'm very vigilant about it now because I know the pain and the suffering that I had to go through when I was a kid and neglected those sorts of cuts just thinking, oh, they'll go away. They're not going to go away if you don't have nerves down there or blood flow in order to heal them. So uh, that's going to do it for my One Take Monday. I will see you guys tomorrow. My birthday's coming up. Uh, when you guys uh, see that, so uh, that'll be Thursday when you see just kind of what I'm doing. It's nothing big as far as I know so far. But um, on Wednesday will be my birthday, so I'll be uh, celebrating and doing some things with friends in the next couple of days. I'm getting really excited for that. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow.